Welcome to Tales from the Flip Side. This is our modern book roundtable. Let's go around and introduce everyone. You go, Nico. You kick it. Yeah, done. Blue Green Artifacts. Hi, everybody. My name's Tony. <laughs> That's my buddy. Long short. This is Ben. Happy to be here. Uh, Dino, aka CEO, just living life. Uh, Steve from My Bar and Comics, part time hat model. Thank you. Like <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and it's I'm better Aaron. on you than everybody else. And I'm Aaron. Oh, oh. You can catch me on Comic Book Food Chain. So, yep. Jessup, how are you, buddy? I'm Jessup. Oh, I'm doing well. What's up, YouTube? How's everybody doing tonight? AKA okay, the half price crop. Aaron, don't make us wait. Let's play. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, Deal or Flip Side. I've been waiting all week. <laughs> all right. So for this week, I have. Jupiter's Legacy number one, first print cover A, or a Department of Truth number one, cover A, at a 9.8. I'll go first. Uh, Department of Truth one, uh, all day. That, that seems very reasonable to me, also. I would definitely get that. But I also, uh, the Miller stuff, I, I haven't really, I never got on that boat. I kind of usually generally shy away from indies i know they're both indies but i i had more interest in the department of truth so final answer department of truth one okay i'll go next and it's gonna be the same for me you know i department of truth might be the best thing out there um in terms of new books so uh, i'm on that all day whereas i remember buying some jupiter legacy like back in 2014 and it, it's taken so long to freaking get rid of those books. Now, to be honest, um, I've read a lot of Millar stuff. I never actually got the chance to, to read Jupiter's Legacy. I know the market's working a little bit different with streaming uh, shows. And I know if this is good, you know, we may see a, a couple month uh, bump. But, um, oh man, it's just. I'd, I'd, I'd be scared of, of having a 9-8 of Jupiter's Legacy and not being able to get rid of it. It was hard enough to get rid of the Raws, <laughs> and it took so long. I'm, I'm not interested in diving back in. I'm going with Department of Truth. Final answer. Uh, I hate to be redundant, but I, I say Department of Truth won. Um, yeah, like you said, uh, I, I think you would stick around at Jupiter's Legacy. I think you sell now, and that's probably the, the top of the price point. Uh, but yeah, I'm in the same boat. Department of Truth number one. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm supposed to pick the other book. Uh, I just can't. <laughs> um, Department of Truth has um, much broader appeal given the subject matter. A show on Department of Truth could be an absolute um, hit, right? And for people who don't give a shit about superheroes or comics. So I, I think just the, the, the appeal for that. Now, Jupiter's Legacy, I think, will be awesome. I think it'll be great. I think it'll be somewhat more narrow um, in the in, in 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 the end market. Department of Truth is almost limitless, so I got to go Department of Truth as well. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the train going. Uh, I'm gonna go Department of Truth. I have high hopes for the Millerverse. Uh, I don't. This isn't the most you know. Uh, this isn't the the property that I was looking forward to the most. Put it that way. I think he's got some books that would are gonna kill. Uh, with the proper budget, with the proper writing, and the, and the proper you know push, obviously Netflix has the money. So um, I wasn't blown away by the preview, by the trailer uh, for Jupiter's Legacy. I, I'm hoping. I always try to be optimistic. I'm I'm hoping it's awesome, and I'm hoping it brings a lot of people back in. This book has been you know it's been in long boxes for a long time. Uh, I think there's a lot of pessimism right now. Uh, some fans that really hope it blows things out of the water, but Department of Truth is just kind of groundbreaking. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with that. Um, I've been sitting here trying to think of a way that I could support uh, suggesting that I would buy a Jupiter's Legacy nine eight, but I've yet to come <laughs> up with a way to do that. Uh, I got yeah. I, I hope that I can find all of the copies that I have so that I can sell them between now and May. <laughs> Department of Truth. Wow. I think this is the first time it's been a unanimous decision of... I think of so, work. too. Yeah. So, Department of Truth for me, too. 
but yep. All right, let's move on to the next book. So I have Incredible Hulk number 340 at a 9-4 newsstand. And then we also have Wolverine number one, the month uh, first ongoing monthly series. Got to save the best for last, right? Yeah, so um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, that's a tough choice. I'll take Patch uh, narrowly. Um, look, I, I really like uh, the Incredible Hulk 340 in high grade. Uh, it's a tough 9.8, and newsstand 9.8s uh, commanded a significant premium over the direct market 9.8s before um, the uh, baseball card people came in and um, started buying all the 9.8s regardless of whether or not they were direct in newsstand and just sending the uh, GPA or if you use uh, Go Collect data, uh, crazy. Um, at the end of the day, uh, Wolverine's patch is how he could appear on the big screen. Um, plus, I, I think, uh, you know, already uh, having uh, Madripoor as a setting uh, sort of sets the stage potentially for um, that kind of uh, storyline in people's minds, regardless of whether or not it materializes. I like Incredible Hulk 340. It's certainly a, a homaged book time and time again. And, and I, I imagine that uh, a lot of guys are sitting at home like, look it, I'll crack it out, you know. Uh, but I don't think that that's an appropriate uh, answer from where I sit. Um, I don't know enough about the books. If I had them in hand and I thought there were repressible defects, you know, that's a whole different issue. Uh, but just on the merits, I'll take a, a Wolverine 1 ongoing 9-8. All right. So yeah, that's, that's a tough one. I, I think I know, you know, for the scarcity crowd, I know which one I should, I should pick uh, with the, you got Todd McFarlane, you have one of the, the huge homage books, you got a newsstand, um, you got nine fours and nine sixes that are on the rise, but I, I'm, I think I'm with you, Nico. I, I uh, Wolverine number one, isn't the biggest key in the world, but it's, it's an important book. There are always going to be nine eight snobs. I am a seller, so down the road, um, I see. I think I would if they were at a con for the same price, I would pick up the Wolverine number one right now. Yeah, th this one's considerably more difficult than the last one for me. I, I do know that Wolverine number one and nine eight is hard, right? That black cover picks up ticks like nobody's business. Um, Real, real tough in 9.8, an important book. I, I, I'm i leaning towards um, Incredible Hulk 340 because um, I do like the newsstand aspect of it. And I also like uh, the potential upside in the fact that, you know, there, there's been a lot of rumors that one of the properties we're going to see from Marvel is a Hulk Wolverine movie. Mm -hmm. So I, I think if that were to materialize, uh, this book could see some additional heat you know on top of that it is a classic mcfarlane cover this is a narrow one for me but i'm gonna go with with uh with hulk 340. um i'm gonna go uh wolverine one and it's because i've been stacking them man i had a stack maybe like this this big full of uh wolverine ones back i had like 30 or 40 on that one point new stands directs it was crazy and I, I mean i bought them all for like a dollar a piece or whatever and then sold them for like 10 or 20 and i thought i was the man um, <laughs> uh, but i still have a stack of some wolverine one so uh i'm gonna go with wolverine one i mean i, I think I, I think honestly i think the buy-in was low enough in the beginning that that's what makes it attractive to me um uh, I, I still think you can buy some for for a, a raw copies for, for for lower prices than you know 340 so i, I think i think the buy-in's cheaper and the gamble is more uh, rewarding if it pops than trying to stack up on 340s and maybe making a 10% play, you know. I'm going to admit my my ignorance. Um, you know, I said, uh, you know, I came back into the hobby from from being a DC fan. I, I did I did read X Men as uh, you know as a kid, uh, but I don't I don't get the whole patch thing. Maybe someone can explain it to me. So. Uh, I have read some of the Wolverine series, just not from uh, number one. Whereas getting back into the hobby in the past decade or two, 340s, you know, I, I knew from the get go, 340 was a iconic cover. And, you know, 
Hulk and Wolverine, you, you just got to think they're going to meet up in the MCU, and that's going to provide some fire at some unknown future point. <laughs> it's going to happen. We don't know if, if Patch is going to happen. I mean, we don't know that Hulk and, and Wolverine are, are going to meet, but, you know, maybe it's, it's, a, it's a better bet. I know a lot of people are attached to the first Wolverine as Patch as the, his possible intro in the MCU. I, I, I guess, again, I, I just admit my ignorance here. And, um, yeah, 9.4 all day. Final answer. This isn't tough for me. Um, I'm, Todd McFarlane is the reason that I I got back into comics. Um, I, I loved his artwork as a kid. I used to sit in study hall and, and try to draw like he did. Like, I, I love him. Nine four, dude. That's a respectable grade for that book. If you flip the back covers around on these books, the Wolverine book has a white spine on the back. It's that kind of like half white, half black with Wolverine standing there. Uh, it's a lot more forgiving. Although the front cover is black, I get that. Um, you know, it's not a newsstand. Those books were taken care of. I think there were a lot of people that bought those books, and I, I know I did as a kid. I bought it from JC's Comic Shop in whatever year it came out. And I immediately bought a bag and board for like 15 cents to, to put it in so I could ride home on my bike with it and not get it all beat up. Shout out to JC's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but dude, the, the, the Hulk 340 is a dude. The, the front cover is a beast, but dude, seriously flip around the back cover. It's terrible. It's that all black. I think it's like an acclaimed video game back cover or something. I don't know. I, I have a stack of them, but the front covers had all kinds of like weird printer defect ink spots on the blue. And I, I'm, I'm certain that maybe they didn't, uh, CGC didn't account for it back in the day so often uh, before it picked up. But, but dude, now they, they're, they're brutal on those things. Um, and also too, it, it, it's Todd versus, I, I'm not sure who the artist is. I apologize on the Wolverine number one. Uh, it might be Cooper. If I... It's not a bad. It's not a bad. I, I'm not sure, I, but I, I say final answer: Hulk three forty all day. Even though, uh, I, like I said, I think a nine four is a respectable grade on this book, especially with a newsstand. Final yeah. answer. Uh, yeah. So this is definitely a tough choice for me. Uh, even though I came up with these two books, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I personally own both. But I, I mean, assume you all have these books, right? I mean, yeah. but yeah, I mean, so I, I guess it would, I guess, boil down to which one I, I had a tougher time finding. So I would definitely have to say the Hulk 340 was harder for me to find than the Wolverine 1. Uh, so I'm going to go with the Wolverine 1 newsstand. Uh, but I mean, that wraparound cover for Wolverine, uh, the monthly, like, is iconic. So it's hard to pass up on that, too. But I mean, if I have to choose, go ahead. I'm gonna go with the Incredible Hulk. Can I say something about that the the uh, the Wolverine Hulk book? And this has always annoyed the hell out of me. And half of you guys might roll your eyes, but all the homages to that book, like the there was the Silver Surfer one, right? Where you know Silver Surfer, you see the reflection. I don't even remember who it was. I think it was in the was it in the Thanos run? I'm not sure, but you see that all the time. Either a reflection in a weapon or a reflection in like somebody who's shiny or armor like the silver surfer that's again this is for physics nerds but that's not how light works if you have a round <laughs> really, if, you have a, if i had a chrome ball and you're standing in front of me you're not gonna see it. it's not a mirror you know it works with the blanks because they're flat but you don't know how adam tady reflects i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid, but it bugs the crap out of me. It's like if you saw that in the movie, you would roll your eyes in a heartbeat. That, that's why Liefeld doesn't make the list here. <laughs> top fire, hot takes. I, I feel better about my chest after seeing his Captain America covers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into our next topic: books you can't buy anymore. Oh. All right. This topic's a little tongue in cheek, right? Obviously, any book is for sale at some price, but. You know, the point of this segment is we're going to talk about some books that really don't show their head very often anymore. So 
got 12 here while we just dive right into it, Aaron. Okay. Um, so this is Saga number one. Um, this was a Diamond Retailer Summit variant, uh, limited to 500. The last sale we saw in this book was for 5,000 um, in late March. Um, and about half of them shown up on the CGC census, at about 273. Listen, I think what, what comic people love about Saga, Saga was it was so organic, right? I mean, it was, it, it, it was a story that was so unique and differentiated. It just pulled people into it. It wasn't necessarily overly promoted or hyped. It really sort of delivered um, purely on its own merits. And um, um, it, it's one of the most important modern properties, in my opinion. And uh, and this particular book is um, this variant is is nearly impossible to come by. I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts on this book, but it's uh, it's one I wish I had. I don't. I absolutely don't. Is it yeah. So it Hi. just disappeared recently, um, and, and I think we should kind of preface the list with. I think when uh, we looked at these, there are no copies available of any of these books on eBay. Uh, if one has inadvertently popped up here in the last like you know, several days, uh, cool. <laughs> but um, this one just recently disappeared. Uh, the nine sixes are gone, the nine eights are gone. There is no indication, uh, at least from Fiona Staples or, or Brian K. Vaughn that uh, the series is returning, although they said that years ago. Um, and in spite of all of that, People are spending thousands on uh, this RRP. It, it's amazing. I, I uh, am one of those unlucky, uh, sad souls that had a 9.8 of the RRP and uh, sold it many, many years ago. And uh, I don't know if I'll ever get my hands on one again. I know where there is one for $2,500. CGC. 9.8? Yeah. Ooh, boy. Mm. I'll give you a hint. about that. I'll give you a hint. The shop's in Ohio. Does so anyone I, know I, that there are only 273 graded? Because this isn't an ancient series. This was, I mean, this was in the seed, you know, the slab era. So I was just going to comment on that. Um, so um, mybargaincomics.com, I did an article on the DC RRP variants. And under that fa falls, I also covered re Diamond Retailer Summit variants. So you had to attend the, the Retailer Summit. Uh, in order to get that. So you had to actually, unless you were in the home city, um, it's been in places like Baltimore, Chicago, um, Fort Wayne, Indiana, but usually had to travel to it. Um, so it was only given to the attendees of, of that summit. Now, a lot of times those summits were done in conjunction with a con like Las Vegas Comic Con or C2E2 or Baltimore Comic Con. So CGC was already there. So that is why you see such a high percentage of the limited to 500 copies graded because the dealers would, you know, go to the summit, get it there at like lunch or dinner or uh, maybe pick it up at the diamond booth and then just take it right over to CGC to be graded. Yeah, the other thing that's cool about this one is uh, I think you would agree, and I think the numbers, although I didn't look at them, will bear this out. Um, this was back when people loved uh, the CGC Signature Series program, when uh, signed gold label books commanded a premium. They don't anymore. Um, and a lot of these copies are signed. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the one in Ohio is not. It's a blue label, and that's you're, exactly what happened. Yeah, you're, you're killing me here with that. I want you to know. <laughs> Like, road trip. Oh uh, well. Also, I'm pretty sure uh, the, the guy that owns a book owns a, a shop. A local Does he shop. also watch, watch our, our show? Yes. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, sorry. That dude. Gone. What's that? I said that one's going to be gone, or at least not no longer 2,500. Oh no! My, my guess is they'll pull it. Um, actually, James was going to buy it for me. Uh. He's like, hey, he's like, uh, because oh, James it's getting also worse by the second, just for me. I want you to know. He's like, hey, he's like, because he, he wanted to repay me for all the books. He's like, hey, do you think there's anything Jess might want in here? He goes, yeah, that, because I asked him about it. I'm like, are you solid on this? Was, I mean, and perhaps he sold it. I don't think so. I think he pulled it. 
uh, it was very dear to him. Like this was before it obviously hit five grand, but he had it at 2,500 and I was like, man, I, I want it, but I'm not going to pay 2,500 for it. Um, hmm. but I'm also, uh, he's a friend. I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to knock him down on his price. If that's what you want, I understand how you price things. This is how you price things. You know, it's a lot, it's near and dear to you. I get it. Some things shouldn't be bartered on. So I, so I, I let it, I let it go, but since I paid attention and James lives so close to it, he he popped in. And he's like, "Hey, I want to buy Jessup something because he bought me all these Fat Albert comic books." <laughs> and uh, you know anything he's looking for? He goes, "Yeah, he's looking for this. You want to buy him this?" And he's like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> that, that that's that's uh, you know that's, oh, okay. we're, all, we're all out of the price range and uh, you know trade of fairness. So yeah. Steve, with how, with how that retailer summit worked, is the theory then that that a number of those five hundred didn't survive, or weren't weren't picked up by collectors, or well, they they only went to retailers who were eligible to attend the summit. Now, with that said, I, I do have the unique case where I happen to live in the Baltimore area, which is close to, uh, which is you know where Diamond Headquarters is. And I did happen probably about six months ago, seven months ago, from an ex Diamond employee's friend. I happened to see a Facebook Marketplace ad for a bunch of Diamond retailer variants. Hello. And I bought a bunch. So obviously, <laughs> my yeah, man. There, there, nice. <laughs> unfortunately, Snaga wasn't in there. Probably, I'm trying to think about the best one. Well, the best. The best one, I tell you, I couldn't get rid of a Tokyo Ghost One Diamond Retailer from it forever. And then, of course, the option you could have had it for like thirty dollars from the yeah. from eBay. And the second it pops, you know, then everyone wants a copy. That's you know, that's how the market psychology right. works. So obviously, there are some leftover copies. I'd say um, the most copies I had of a retailer variant. Uh, maybe we're seven or eight copies. So it's not like there's a ton extra, but they can't always predict, you know, how many people are going to show up. It does that answer your question, Tony? Or Yeah, yeah, yep. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's I'm going to cry now. <laughs> All right. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 667. This is a Del Auto 1 in 100 variant. So you're probably looking at the math here and saying, okay, there were 71,000 copies of this book ordered. How can this book be so rare, right? How could the last copy have sold last summer for $15,000? And how are there 57, only 57 copies on the census? Well, the math is quite simple. So if we think about um, the number of comic retailers, um, the number is about 2,500, right? Uh, when I'm being conservative, I actually drop that down to 2,000. So if you have 2,000, right, and they each were to get 50, that would get you 100,000 copies ordered. Well, that falls well short of this. So the short answer is is that 71,000 for Amazing Spider-Man is a relatively, relatively low for this title. And uh, very, very few retailers are ordering 100 copies of this thing. Um, uh, this is also the book I like to point to when people say, well, you know, how is it? Why is this book worth so much? It doesn't have a first appearance. Well, you know, um, uh, I, I, th I think this book sort of stands on its own. Uh, it's so popular that there are foreign variants of it. Um, um, uh, this book is is, is sort of in, in some ways almost unexplainable. But uh, fifteen thousand dollars last day almost a year ago. Uh, any, anybody have any thoughts on this one? I, I have another great story. It involves James. If you'd like to hear. <laughs> Never can get enough James stories. Yeah. Listen, was... if he if he was uh, if he purchased a copy of this book for you, I I, I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I met James I think five years ago. Uh, we worked together. Uh, my manager uh, approached me. He's like, "Hey, I just hired this guy. He he works at a a, a bar not too far from where my bar's at that I work at," and he said. He's a comic book guy and a card guy. And I'm like, yes, this is awesome. Like, we're going to work the, we're gonna work the weekends together because they just fired this other girl. And I was like, all right, cool. 
Uh, and we hit it off famously. He he knows Mark Nathan, which I, Steve, I know you're familiar with. That's like your local comic shop, right? So uh, he's like, yeah. He goes, uh, you know. So immediately we fuck work. We're just outside smoking a cigarette, talking about cars and comics. And he's like, yeah, man. If there's anything you're looking for, dude, I'm telling you, this Mark guy. He's got you know, he's got everything. He's a great guy. He's a good friend of mine. I grew up with him. I said, all right, like anything. He's like, yeah, anything. Like, does he have a ASM 667, like the 101 100 variant. So he, he goes, I don't know. Hold on a second. I'll text him. And he texts him. And I don't hear anything back. And I'm just kind of like, ah, you know, whatever. You're like, I'm sure he's a busy guy, blah, blah. An hour later, he comes over and shows me this photo on his phone. He goes, he goes, this book? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's the book. Yeah. Does he want to sell it? And he texts him back. And now these two, like I said, they've kind of grown up together. I think. Mark might have like 10 years on him or something like that, but uh, he likes to fuck with James. So he, he's like, no, he wants him to come out and visit him to get the book. And he isn't going to hold it for him. And then I ran my mouth to some people. I'm like, I got a lead on a six, six, seven. This is amazing. And somebody, I told the wrong person and perhaps that, that wrong person might've uh, swooped it up. Oh, oh geez. So, cause, uh, it, it didn't get it didn't get held for James. It didn't get held for me. And that's but nice. you know whatever. Right? Win some, lose some. You know, I, odds are I, I wouldn't have been able to afford the book at the time, anyways. Like I, I wasn't trying to, you know, like oh, how much you know, like the, I, odds are at, at that time that book was I think maybe an eight to ten thousand dollar book. Uh, I don't think it was graded because I, I don't think Mark likes to grade his books. The picture wasn't a graded book; it was a raw book. So. Um. Yeah, you know, win some, lose some. Like I said, I don't think I could have afforded the time, but I definitely would have said, "Hey, James, would you like to split the cost of the book?" <laughs> and and I, I think play. that book defines an era of of comics. Really, you know, I remember you know that book being talked about on the Unpressable Defects uh, oh, yeah. a lot on the in the G Plus group, and not just that book, Del Otto, right? I mean, Del Otto, you know. Pro could be like the first artist of, you know, whatever you want to call this era of comics, where we have a uh, thriving online comic community that kind of started in in G plus and you know with with uh, Unpressable Defects podcast and yeah, um, yeah. really. So. Two quick things about this one. Um, actually, we uh, Ben, we 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 did this the other night in the Google chat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something in it. It'll look really cool in the beginning, and then you'll realize I'm a chump at the end. But here, but we'll start there. <laughs> or keep going. <laughs> Can I say I'm biased? I prefer the Mexico variant because it doesn't have all the <laughs> on the bottom. No, these are. I, I am not lucky enough to own one of those books. But what I will say about this one, though, uh, when I got back into comics, this book was already a giant. I mean, this isn't from, you know, every, there's a lot of $10,000 books this year that weren't before, but this, this didn't go up recently. This, I mean, this went oh, up. Yeah. All right. Danger Girl number two, the Ruby Red Smoking Gun variant. Uh, by all accounts, there's about 400 of these books out there. We haven't seen a nine, nine, eight sell, uh, sell in a long time. 3,500 bucks back in 2018. No way that price holds today. Uh, 40 copies on the census. Now, a couple things to point out in this book. The ruby red refers to the foil uh, in the trade dress. There are a lot of different versions of this book out there. There's some with, with no foil, silver, um, but this one in particular is the hardest one to come by. Uh, very early J. Scott Campbell. You know, his collectors um, all want this book. Um, it rarely ever shows its head, um, but, but one you'd be hard-pressed to ever find. Yeah, I thought Jessup uh, pulled one out of long boxes, but it was the uh, it was a reprint. And I legitimately, I was like dancing around my house for you. <laughs> I was so excited. And then somebody told me later, and I was like, oh man, well that's still cool, but that's not I still like, bought it. I've never seen one in real life cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, super yeah, nice. the artwork's the same. I still bought it, and I, I bought it basically at like thirty percent under market for it like i mean i didn't get it for a dollar like a lot often i do 
get amazing shit, but that it, it was it was the reprint. And I think it was like I don't know, maybe a hundred bucks, something like that, hundred twenty bucks. But yeah, so the image cliffhanger uh, corner plus the red trade dress is the uh, the perfect combo. I mean, this has got to be in the current market more than a ten thousand dollar book. You would think if it ever shows its head in nine eight, right? Thirty five hundred back in two thousand eighteen. How could so it not? There were um, lesser uh, high grade copies that were available shortly before the comic market sort of uh, exploded again in COVID. Um, at, on eBay that I stared at uh, both before and after news of uh, Danger Girl live action, uh, reliving my um, you know 2009 comic book glory, and uh, <laughs> you know I was like, ah, look away, look away from the sun, um, <laughs> but they're gone now. Like you can't buy it. All right, what are the next? I need Oh, I was gonna say, I knew one guy and one guy that has one. James. Uh, <laughs> no. uh, some guy named Kurt Love, man. He was a uh, he was right. on uh, back in the day, man. Like he had he's like on the on the same ranking of like Carter. Like his whole uh he, he got off Google Plus a long time ago, but we still keep in touch. We're kind of pen pals. I, we've never met, I've talked on the phone, we've chat on on Google Plus days, but he he would he would find amazing stuff, and he, one day he showed me that book, and I was like, I didn't even know what it was, so I had to look it up, and I was like, oh, wow, you found one of those, and it was the cliffhanger, um, not the one that I picked up, which I mean, I would still say pick up the one if you can't. It, I don't even see the one that I found ever. Like, I mean, you can find you can find them on eBay, but like if you're on a shop and. It's reasonably priced. I would pick it up. It's the same artwork. It's just a different, and, and I think it's still a foil trade dress. It's just not. It doesn't say cliffhanger above the image sign, if I'm not mistaken. It's an IDW. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, hack and slash slice hard uh, C cover. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> there goes an neighborhood. This is yeah. all you, man. This is your book. Well, it's, it's not, in fact, my book. That's the problem. <laughs> uh, I, I don't have it. I, I ran my mouth and told Gary about it. Uh, fuck you, Gary. And uh, <laughs> he, he's, I never closed the deal. And um, then uh, I think he put it on uh, eBay or alternatively, uh, who else do I want to uh, mother? Gary about just this? Got so I just saw on Instagram, Gary just got this back being graded, I believe, at 9 Nice, my man. All right. And the other person I wanted to uh, motherfuck is um, uh, who's the other person that has a copy of this uh, over at CBSI. Um, that was like the report. The Walker <laughs> reports. Tim Walker. Uh, Fuck you too, Tim. Oh, oh, uh, of course. Tim, no, yeah. No. Uh, yeah. So, no, legitimately, Tim was trying to help me find a copy. Um, but you know, I think Gary tried to sell his for $700 on eBay. Uh, Tim out of the kindness of his heart also was looking for one. I don't know what this book is worth. I just know that I've been looking for one for like a calendar year and, uh, zero copies have showed up on eBay. So, uh, add this to the long list of books that I ran my mouth about that now I will no longer, um, be able to afford. Uh, Yeah. I give up. There's three on the census, like fucking three, right? I mean, this book has got to be a legit ghost. I mean, so 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 Tim has one, Carter has one. And Tim, may, one. yeah, Tim may or may not have one. I was just joking around. Uh, so it's not Gary that definitely has no. one, and yeah. uh, if Carter has one, he's been kind enough to keep that a secret from me. Uh, so that I don't add him to my long list of resentments about. And I'm sure he pulled it out of a dollar bin too, on top of the whole thing, right? I mean, right. Yeah, damn it. Exactly. I mean, all right. So that counts all three for the census, then, right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, heart wrenching, heart wrenching story. Epic loss. All right, dead at seventeen. Number one. This is a mini comic. 
Um, by all accounts, there's 20 or less of these. Uh, I couldn't find any evidence in the 9.8 sale, and frankly, I couldn't find any on the census. So, um, as far as I can tell, this book doesn't really exist. What? You said there's 20? Yeah, so it it's uh, basically the kind of like underground, uh, self-published yeah. um, Josh Howard win. Um, if you guys uh, have been around, you know, like me on and off for a long time, then you all remember when Dead at 17 was like the property. Uh, I think it was the property that inspired things like Hack Slash or, you know, all of these uh, sort of like um, female driven, um, you know, kind of like indie titles. And uh, everyone thought that this was going to get made. Um, hmm. e everyone did. And uh, it never did. Um, I still buy the number ones every chance I get. Not this particular uh, copy, but the regular number one, um, just because of how beloved it was uh, back in the day. And I, I think, you know, potentially it's got some upside in the future. But um, it's one of those, like, indie properties that will just always be near and dear, I think, to a lot of us that have loved indie comics for a long, long time. Um, and I've never seen one of these in person. Uh, and you know, you just kind of like you hear the whispers. Um, so who knows? So there are none on the census. Is that what I'm saying? Nothing that I could pull up. I mean, I looked, I couldn't <laughs> find anything. Yeah. I mean, it was like the pirate girl or curse pirate girl. Number one was like the uh, distant second to this bad boy on the CGC boards, uh, back in like 20. 12 2013 or whatever that everybody was trying to get their hands on um the curse pirate girls would come to market for major money this one just never came to market so i don't know who's got them but could it be uh, one of the situations where cgc doesn't grade it yeah it could yeah, very I mean, it could very well be like uh gobbledygook I, I don't know um the finer details of uh you know like whether or not you can distinguish if it was uh real or, or fake or you know, if, if Howard signed the inside covers or, or not, like gobbledygook. Um, but, uh, you know, then you get in those situations where if uh, Howard would authenticate it, I think CGC would, would grade it. You know, if he said, like, oh, yeah, that's a copy. I gave it to this person. I think. Who knows? All right, I got a story Freaking about this. Awesome. I'm joking. I don't. Yeah, don't fuck with me. <laughs> Watch your mouth. I'm 0 for 2 right now. <laughs> 0 for 2. Yeah, so um, Batman 608. I, I did some research uh, last year when I was doing that RRP and Comics Pro article that I have. Um, so I'll, I'll make a couple uh, points about this. One, it is an actual RRP. I, the R term RRP gets thrown around a lot. But I the mean, only, yeah. <laughs> now, hey, even I, I do it. Yeah. Even even I do it. But really, the only company that ever made RRPs was DC. RRP stood for Retailer Roundtable Program, and so that was more exclusive than the Diamond Summit prints, because you had to be invited by DC. It was for them to get feedback from. Uh, retailers and vice versa. Um, so it was a very exclusive uh, meeting. You had to travel, and it wasn't in in um, conjunction with a, a convention. Uh, this was really, hey, I'm I'm going to go see DC Comics. In this case, it was I'm going to go see DC Comics in Burbank in 2002, um, and that that's where this variant was given out. I don't think it was that. Uh, long after DC had acquired w Wildstorm. And really what they acquired with Wildstorm was Jim Lee. And this was Jim Lee's first multi-issue run on a DC monthly title. And as a lot of our viewers will know, this launched the Hush storyline. Um, so this is the first Hush. Um, of course, Jim Lee was, you know, people are bananas about Jim Lee, uh, but people forget at the time, Jeff Loeb was this uh, huge uh, uh, writer 
Um, and so it's like, wow, you're taking the best writer and you're taking the best artist uh, in the industry and putting them together on a monthly title. Um, and so that's a couple of the reasons why this is in so demand. It's the low print run. You had to be at that Burbank uh, RRP meeting. Um, you had to, you know, it, it was the, you know, it's, it's early Jim Lee, DC, Jeff Loeb, Hush. You've got, so you've got the Jim Lee collectors. You've got the Batman collectors. You've got Harley's on the cover. So you've got the Harley collectors. Um, so, so everyone, you know, wants, wants this. I, I think some of the heat has diminished. I mean, I remember when, um, uh, the RRP program was still going around the new 52 um, and people were still talking about 608, but uh, true collectors still love this book, still want this book. I don't, you know, it's not, um, it's not fading anytime soon. Um, I, I think it's just gone a little bit, maybe off people's radars uh, as maybe the whole DC line has, uh, so, um, yeah, it's, um, it's, 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 it's pretty cool. I mean, even just getting a Batman 608 that's not RRP is, is worth uh, some good money. So. Yeah, a couple of quick thoughts. So, like, I intentionally omitted this book, even though it's one of my all-time favorite books, because you can buy it. Uh, okay. But I'm super happy that someone uh, made the decision to put it on the list, because... Right. It's the fucking book that started the mega variants, right? Like yeah. it all happened with this one. And, uh, you know, I think uh, there was just a lot of confusion about the retailer uh, roundtable program because uh, RRP became uh, sort of like a, a slang or an acronym that was used for eBay listings. And I think some people thought it was like a retailer rewards program. So they slapped it on the sagas and sure. other like diamond books. You know, so like right. sometimes those books that would come out that were actually RRPs, um, people would list them as like Diamond Summit variants. Because uh, when that stuff, if, uh, you know, you've been around forever, you remember like they would launch, they would give these books out, people would take pictures of them with their damn cell phones, and they'd be selling them on eBay. People would be buying them off eBay from these retailers before they ever got out of, you know, whatever city they were in. Right. I mean, they just went like bing, bing, bing. Um, and then RRP sort of became like a, the universal way to list it. Um, and I think that's kind of what spawned a lot of that confusion. I think. Oh, yeah. 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 Super. I mean, it's like it's the one Batman book that uh, it's the best modern Batman book, period, by all accounts. And uh, one I wish uh, was in my collection. Um, I would love I mean, I loved this storyline. I remember buying uh the black and white Jim Lee hardcover so that I could read it that way. Uh, right. It was so important to me. Uh, and I think a lot of people feel the same way. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I wonder what I got to look and see what the dang copies cost. Now you guys are this, this whole thing's going to cost me money. <laughs> and like, um, and like so spawn five right. points. Spawn 221. Um, this is uh, an homage to uh, AF 15, obviously. Uh, this was a one in twenty-five uh, retailer incentive variant. Mm -hmm. uh, this was back in uh, in the in the low print run spawn days. So um, you know, one in twenty-five off seventeen thousand copies ordered. You know, most retailers weren't getting getting anywhere near this. Um, this one does pop on pop up on eBay now and then, um, um, but by all accounts, no, a really <laughs> cool book. Uh, be careful. The one that does pop up is is the, the Mexican, Mexican variant, yeah. right? If Mexico's doing a variant of a book, you know it's a big deal, right? I, that, that, that. <laughs> Who is that guy? Yeah, he's got substantial influence. He just picks um, a winner, and they go, they're all gone forever, forevermore. Um, but yeah, I mean, just just a must have for spawn collectors, and and uh, you know, with with eighty on the census, uh, uh, you know, good luck finding this one. Do you guys think that price point's uh, way low for what it would sell for if one popped absolutely. up today? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I was yeah, shocked, actually. Definitely. Yeah, because I remember one of the other uh, black and whites from this sort of time span um, commanding more money. Um, 
and I can't remember what the dang cover was, but it it certainly wasn't this one. One eighty five, I think, was the other one um, that we had talked about. That's uh... oh yeah, the one eighty five. I think might be the hardest of them all uh, because people just love that storyline for some reason. But um, there was another one that wasn't one eighty five that I oh, that's going to drive me nuts. I'm going to have to go back because when I saw it at the time, it was a big number. Um, but you know, seeing there, what there the hell's been... happened now. You know what I mean? Like, I, Lord only knows what this one would do, or, or I guess even that one. Right. I mean, I just sold a 174 for a 1000 bucks so a couple months ago. So I wow. feel like the A cover, if you had a 9.8 of 221, would go for over 500 right now. Exactly what I was going to say, Tony. Great point. Like, it, it, it's serious. But the only thing, and if I could add this to this, as a spawn collector, we're a little strange. Most spawn collectors don't want them graded. I would gamble to say that this raw would would fetch more than a CGC uh, 9.8. Personally, I, and I could be completely off, but uh, ask your friends that collect spawn. They, they want to be the guy that meets Todd, have Todd sign it mm. and have it slab personally or or they want to read it and they don't fucking want it slabbed. I, I don't, I don't, I, I guess I'm not that big of a junkie. I'm just more of like, eh, it's something I started like three or four years ago. I'm going to finish the run. I'm not a huge spawn junkie. I just like, I'm so fucking close. I, I, I'm just, I'm going to fucking just put my head down and spit on the floor and do it because I'm so close. But for the most part, when I when you talk to people, or if you say, "Hey, yeah, you oh, you got that, yeah, you, you want to come off that?" They're like, nah. I'm like, all right, why not? You know, like, I'll I'll pay whatever. Yeah, you know, like, no, I'm good. They don't spawn collectors. They they want them. They don't want them slabbed. I, I don't know who's buying slab spawn books. I really don't. I, I, maybe it's people that think that like, oh, I'll get it slabbed. But if you, I think if you look and do a little bit of research, you'll find out that raw copies of Spawn often out price graded copies of Spawn. Hmm. So Which I, I've got a, you buy it and crack it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a two twenty two story. I, I, just the other week, I won two twenty two the color in a lot, and that's a uh, homage to Action Comics one. And I was like thrilled. I, I got it for like ten dollars, right? Wow! So I get it in the mail, and it's completely uh, different books. And then the seller contacts me and says, "I I accidentally switched the books. Um, you know, do you want a refund?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> I want a lot. Uh, you know, can you get the person you sent it to?" So they were just like, well, oh, that's a lot to coordinate, you know. Would you be okay with just refund? I'm like, okay, but the whole time mm -hmm. I'm thinking this 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 might just be a scam, right? I mean, yeah, you know, try to try to um you know sell it and then go, you know, when it when you don't get the auction result you like, just send a bunch of you know junk books and uh, or, a, or a no no interest loan. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like Psh. So that was, that was disappointing. Just had to add that story in. I, I'm sorry that happened to you. That's terrible. Um, That's, I'm already over it. Yeah, I mean, you gotta take your lumps. Yep, <laughs> dude. All right, so this wow. is uh, Star Wars Galaxy Edge number one, uh, the Imagineer concept art variant. Uh, this was given away to Disney Imagineers, um, so this was never available for sale. Uh, it was a giveaway at a, at a at a conference or a convention, I believe. Um, you know, this book uh, last sale was uh, last summer for four grand. There's only six of these things on the census, right? You probably never ever find this. My guess is that half of these books um, were brought home and given to the Imagineers' kids, and uh, will never be seen again. Um, but uh, but this is becoming. Uh, a grail for a lot of the hardcore Star Wars fans, um, and uh, and and a book that uh, may never, never, ever show its head again on eBay. I'm going to sound like a super dork right now, but it's 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 the the art is amazing. It's fantastic, man! I love it. Yeah, 
I want this book. I do I too. I forget who the artist <laughs> Wow. I've never seen that book. I didn't know anything. I didn't even know that existed. Was in, so I believe the it. art was concept art for when they were building, um, you know, the Star Wars world within within Disney. I, I believe that that's where this, where this art came from. Yeah, when they launched that uh, the new, uh, I don't want to call it a ride there, but that interactive thing. Um, Isn't it called Galaxy's Edge? Yes. Galaxy's Edge. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. Shows how how little I pay attention. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> And now all it's right. A- all right. All right, Steve. All right. This is all you have. Yeah, this is this is one that I never knew existed before I started putting together an article on my bartoncomics.com uh once again uh on DC promo comics. And I don't know how I came ac- across it because I mean it, it's not listed um anywhere. I, I, I can't even remember, but um, I, I wanted one and I, I, I couldn't find it. So as background, I've never been to SDCC, but this was given away at the Teen Titans Go panel mm-hmm. at SDCC 2016. Now, I figure if you go to SDCC 2016, you have to really love Teen Titans Go in order to <laughs> end the panel. Um, because I, I figure you've probably got a multitude of other options. Um, so only people that attended that panel um, got it. And it was um, created to support the launch of a, uh, of a game, a, a mobile game called uh, Teeny Titans. Uh, this was when Pokemon Go was popular. So from my understanding, Teeny Titans is like the Teen Titans version of Pokemon Go. Um, it was released digitally, um, and I believe every copy has a sticker on it. And why do I think that? It's because I was, after I wrote the article, I was able to find a copy on eBay. I did one of the daily uh, emails that comes to you. And as soon as I saw it, I pressed buy it now as quickly as I could, um, and um, and then I posted it to one of our hangouts, and John Z is the only other person I know who owns a copy, and it also has the uh, sticker uh, on it. And I still have the email going to me every day, but I hardly ever, I rarely get the email, um, and it's never this book. Um, so yeah. it is really, really uh, hard to find if I haven't already um you know underscored that fact <laughs> what are you trying to say steve <laughs> it, it, it it yeah it's really really hard to find <laughs> well, well the funny thing is steve suggested it for the list i'm like steve you gotta help me out here man i can't find anything on this book right it is it is a genuine ghost so yeah cool stuff you know it'd be fun we should just make up a book and put it <laughs> This one that doesn't even exist <laughs> to drive me crazy. <laughs> Do a DC promo book and it'll drive me crazy. Uh-oh. Oh, well, we joked about it for April Fools. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I almost, uh, because I, dude, I have I have so many like garbage DCU variants that I could cut the little square out of. <laughs> that I thought like, oh, okay. I was Drop it on a Marvel know. book and see what somebody says. It's an MCU yeah. variant. <laughs> no, but how about like a star, a DC Star Trek book? Because well, I don't they, think they actually did their own version of Star Trek DCUs because uh, they were distributed like, along with the DCUs. Uh, I really, really showed it, what would be cool it would be to do a Sandman one because that that did come out in the DCU era, wow. right? But they're okay. All right, Fair yeah. nice. <laughs> and so it begins. <laughs> All right, then, then the next book on the list is, we could, right, so we've got Transformers Universe number one. So this book, this, there's some, some confusion about where it was made available. Um, you know, a lot of people believe that it was uh, came out at the official Transformers Collector Convention, um, but there's some contradicting um, um, stories that, that that in fact wasn't the case. 
um, that, that it re was released at another convention later on. Um, the short story here is that this book is exceptionally rare. I, I saw that there were two on the census and um, it sold um, you know, two, over two years ago or coming up on two years ago at a nine six for almost 1300 bucks. Um, so, um, you know, good luck finding this one. Well, uh, there, you know, there was one urban legend. Yeah, no, there was one. Right. And then it added to the long list of books that like disappeared. It, like when Ben was like, Hey, what are some of these books? And I was like, uh, I'll just go through like my list of save searches of shit. I'm trying to steal. And then I was like, oh, well, that doesn't exist anymore. Like, oh, that doesn't exist. And this is one. And there was like a copy that was on eBay and it was appropriately priced and poof, gone. And I just wonder if if this video will drive uh, these books to market or if we'll just never see them ever again. <laughs> if people will just be like, it really is mine. It's a ghost and you'll never see them. I don't know. We should have called this the Kaiser Soze list. I mean, that's <laughs> Bingo! I think you just named it. <laughs> That's a good All right, the, the, this book is is, is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. um, but but we've got to talk about it because it's part of uh, comic lore at this point. So I'm going to see if I can get this story straight. So there was a uh, a second print of the fourth printing. Um, whatever that means, of Sex Criminals number six um, with uh, with Matt Fraction and Chip Zdarsky on the cover. Um, Juliet and Heather from Fantastic Comics um, basically uh, sent them a picture of themselves um, homaging that cover. And, um, and uh, you know, Chip Zdarsky and Matt Fraction being who they are, um, they decided they would run with it and they made... Um, uh, but a hundred copies that they gave just to Juliet and Heather at uh, Fantastic Comics. So this was only made available um, to that comic store, really almost as a joke. Um, uh, you know, by by all accounts, there's about a hundred of these. Uh, there were eleven on the census. The last sale we saw of this was uh, was fifteen hundred and nine point eight, and that was way back in two thousand sixteen. So. Um, I don't think this book is going to see the light of day again um, anytime soon, um, but 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 certainly uh, one I thought was uh, was pretty funny and we should touch on a little bit. And uh, you know, there's a funny story. You can look it up. I'm not going to get into it here because this video will get censored. But um, you know, the brimpception variant, you know, brimping is a. Uh, is a, an intimate act between two people that uh, that Zadarsky apparently made up in issue number one, and you know you can go look at it <laughs> time. Uh, just like to point out, this is uh, the, the, my my girlfriend's favorite comic book she's ever read. <laughs> wow! Uh, and I feel bad I haven't read it yet, uh, but she's told me about it. We've talked about it. Like I get it. Uh, it it's it's a interesting aspect i don't know how they could ever make this into a movie or a, a series or whatever but i think it would be amazing <laughs> it was supposedly um optioned i don't I, I don't know if it's still in limbo or something but i, I believe that somebody came looking for this particular property but like showtime yeah, right now. well it was option <laughs> hell i mean if you talk to lemire uh he will uh, apparently tell people at cons like uh, yeah, it's it's still they're still working on it um, because he's a, a Canadian and uh, Jimmy Linguini would always like you know talk to him about it. He was a big fan of the property and and you know he was uh, essentially like it's still coming. I don't know if that was a bad joke or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Anyway, all right, Inception. Okay. All right, I believe this is our last book on the list, and this is a book that I want. Uh, desperately, um, and I'm not sure I'll ever have a shot at it, but this is Invincible Iron Man number one. Um, this was a store exclusive um, from, from um, Amalgam Comics and Coffee House in Philadelphia. Uh, it's unclear how many of these were printed, um, but it, the book doesn't show up very often, and when it does, it moves quickly, even in low grade. 
Uh, the last week, uh, there's 34 copies on the census. Last sale was raw for 700. Um, but as a big Riri fan, I would love to have this book in my collection. I hunted it a long time with, with no luck whatsoever. Don't we all look like fools for not buying it at like 450 when it was like at 450? Oh man, I, I think there was one Jess that like hanging around 300 ago. for a while. Like and it wasn't it wasn't perfect, but it was three hundred raw. I want to say, never yeah. pulled the trigger. Never pulled the trigger. I figured more would show up. Nothing, right? Um, well, so. there's is that nine four still lingering out there? It presents like hell. It's like fourteen hundred dollars, and I used to stare at it every day, twice a day. Uh, <laughs> I think it's gone. I think it's gone. Oh boy! Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah, I, I yeah. haven't seen this one in a while, but. Um, well, there, I, there was an international copy that was just kind of like out there too for a while uh, that I kept looking at. And again, then it disappeared. Um, it's awesome. I, I wonder if uh, the uh, lady that owns Amalgam Comics and Coffee House has copies. Well, that's all. That's the big question, right? And I think so that's it's got everybody big... nervous, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's what holds people off from dropping the big money on it, to be honest with you is does she have more just sitting back and she just doesn't care to sell them, right? Because uh, there should be more than 34 of these <clears throat> on the census, you would think. I mean, perhaps she's the smartest w woman in, in, in the room <laughs> in that aspect. Um, that's, that's totally possible, but I doubt it. I don't think that it was done... Uh, that way like i don't think it was intentional to to make money i think it was uh hey i i i, I back this person i like i this character i i want to i want to be iconically immortalized with this character well we know the deal with marvel variants right three thousand print run minimum sure uh, that's sure. how many copies you have to buy the I don't know how this one was distributed. I mean, did they just like have it there? Uh, did she give it out to her friends? Did you know a thousand yeah. of them end up with coffee stains on them? Um, comparatively, uh, with all of the other Marvel variants, you sure as hell don't see as many copies of this one. And uh, it yeah. is super interesting to all of us. I, I've never heard anyone say, like, oh, that's a terrible variant. Everybody's just like. So how much do you think I'd have to pay? I mean, that's like the only question well, universally from like the smartest people I know about modern uh, modern books. So the uh, the the only person I could refer to would be Dennis, and he's like, you know what, you know, maybe they would cut a deal for somebody, uh, a small shop or something like that or whatever. Like it, you know, on occasion, uh, if you have a shop and you you do things for them and you know somebody there perhaps you went to high school with somebody that works there or you went to college with somebody that works there or whatever or you just have a buddy all right cool maybe we'll just cut you a thousand copies you know i'm, I'm not well, saying that I, true i'm not i i think this was more of a, a landmark variant rather than the typical store variant if if I remember, I, I've done some research um, into this one because I know it comes up a lot um, in our group. And, and I even remember when it first came out, the, the press. And, um, you know, part, part of the reason why the owner's on the cover is because it was the first black woman owned comic shop, um, I, th I think, in the world. Um, and, um, and this was the same time, you know, Riri was being, you know, introduced uh you know not 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 the same month and day obviously but um you know the the you know how marvel reboots uh, or renumbers every every year whether they need it or not <laughs> the, the next invincible iron man uh series that started after that so um yeah i, I think it was more uh, like a celebratory variant rather than the typical store variant and i know like for cons and events, there's maybe some smaller runs than, you know, if you're doing a typical, you know, store variant. Yeah, I'm trying to think when Marvel Switch, because 3,000 is the number now, but it was definitely okay. 1,000 for a long time, right? 
Um, and that may have been at that point where that book came out. But Ariel Johnson, I think that's her name, Ariel Johnson. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, she was kind of a landmark personality in the comic space. So it very well may have been a, a super <laughs> limited thing that they did did just for her. Because if there were 3,000 of those, we would have seen more by now, right? There's no well, question. I, I think the concern say. is that they're sitting at her shop. I would love to just talk to her and say, congratulations, freaking awesome. We didn't forget about this. This book's amazing. What you're doing is amazing. You know, tell us uh, about you and about your shop. Um, I, I have not reached out to her, and that's my fault. Uh, we should, but I, I know we some people that have. Uh, they probably weren't like, hey, let's celebrate what you've uh, gotten accomplished. Uh, but we're probably more like, so you're trying to sell me a stack of those books? Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So perhaps uh, a little more class and, and grace in, in the uh, pitch uh, may yield um, some results. Uh, but I, I'd really like to uh, figure out what's up with that book. And I would, regardless of how many or anywhere, love to have a copy of it. It's awesome. We, we should really try to get her on the show, actually. I mean, I think that would be yeah. an exceptional cool. segment. Um, I, I think I think that would be really cool. And, and, like, and we should not hit her up for books, but just try and understand no. how it came to be. Yeah. And like, <laughs> right? yeah. I, I, I think that, yeah. would, that would be great. Yeah, I think the first time I heard about this book was through Mighty Mail V, like just even of, the, of its ex existence of this. So. Yeah, we, we've talked about it a lot off and on. Just I think everybody wants it, right? But there's just none to be had. So um, anyways, uh, anyways, I hope everybody enjoyed the list. We're going to try to do this once a month. Um, there's obviously far more books to talk about than just the ones we had here. Um, but um, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll, uh, we'll look through it again here soon. Good stuff, guys. Cool. cool.